Hello, everybody. Welcome to another video from the RPA Vanguard channel. My name is Andy Menon. Today, we are going to be taking a look at how to make your AI skills in the UiPath AI Center publicly accessible. By making your skills accessible over public channels, you or your customers will be able to enhance their projects and applications considerably by using the AI capabilities that you have made available for them over the public channel. What I have here is a document comprehension project that I created uh, for demonstration at the UiPath DevCon 2021. And uh, what this project does or what this AI skill does is it helps you to recognize entities in large components of text. I will be using this project to demonstrate how to make the skill that is part of this project public. And I'm using uh, this project specifically because it keeps things simple and the skill that has been used here is not trainable. Uh, and that means uh, the steps to follow to make it public will be simple and pretty easy to follow. So let's quickly take a look at how this project has been set up. This is a very uh, simple uh, project and I do not have any data sets or any pipelines. Uh, the reason being the skill, as I said before, is not a trainable skill. If I go to ML packages and if I navigate to where this package is located, uh, that is language analysis and named entity recognition, you will see that this package is not trainable. Therefore, the steps to make this public are pretty simple, uh, which I'll demonstrate here. And once we make the skill public, we can get into a client such as Postman and demonstrate how to access this skill over public API. So with that, let me get back to the specifics of this project. So here, obviously this is the dashboard. There is nothing fantastic. And I have a package. That package has been converted to a skill. And that's pretty much it. At this point, this skill is accessible to you uh, via UiPath Studio and you can incorporate the AI capabilities into your automations. But if you want to do something outside of your automation, you will have to make this skill accessible over public channels. So for that, let's go and take a look at how to do that. So I'm assuming that viewers are already familiar with how to create a skill out of a package. So I already have a skill here. And if I click on this skill, uh, you will see a lot of information here. And you will also see that this skill has been made public. I've already made it public because I already have an API key that is available for those who can, um, you know, who are authorized to use this AI skill in their projects. And there is also a dedicated URL to access the skill. Now, how do you make that happen? Because under normal circumstances, this is not default. You will have to enable the skill to go public. To make the skill public, I'm going to click on modify current deployment and I'm going to enable the slider. So here I've already enabled it, but you will find this slider disabled and you can enable it to make the skill public. And you can also enable it to auto update so that this underlying skill gets updated and the latest capabilities are available to your end users. And obviously, if you don't want the skill to hang around uh, after a long time of disuse or inactivity, you could choose a suitable time span after which that skill is going to be turned off. In this case, I've chosen a month. Um, just as an example, you could choose a smaller interval such as a day or a week. So I'm gonna cancel because I don't have any changes here, but what you will normally do is once you enable your skill, 
you will be hitting confirm. So once you have confirmed uh, your changes, the modify current deployment uh, button will remain grayed out for some time until your deployment is modified. And once the deployment is modified, uh, you will see the API key and the URL available to you. And now this skill will be accessible to those to whom you are going to give out this API key. And that is pretty much how you make a skill publicly accessible. Now, in this case, uh, the process has been pretty easy because uh, you did not have to go through a more elaborate process of making the data sets public uh, before you could make the skills public. Uh, you could look into the documentation for more information on how to make a trainable skill public. But in this case, the process has been extremely simple. The next step for us is to see how we could use the skill over an API call, uh, which means that I will be using the skill from an external client that is not typically an automation client such as UiPath Studio or UiPath Assistant. So for that, I will need a couple of things. I will need this URL. So it's, there's a copy button. So you copy this URL. And if I open up notepad so this is a pretty lengthy url and uh, you can recognize which skill that this url corresponds to by scrolling all the way to the right and taking a look at the name of the skill uh, that's part of this url uh, the next item is obviously the api key and these are the two pieces of information that you will need uh, to initiate a call from an external client to your AI skill. This is my Postman environment and I've already created a UiPath public AI skill environment here. And I have added a few environment variables that I'll be using uh, to post uh, the request. And I've already prepared a collection uh, and the collection already has a working request uh, that is used uh, to establish uh, a connection with this publicly accessible AI skill. You can see that the, um, all, the, uh, all the components of this request are abstracted behind variables. So it's not a great thing for demonstration purposes. So what I'll be doing is I'll be creating another request where I'll be hard coding all the aspects of the request so that it's easier for the audience to follow. Uh, so with that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another request. And I'm going to save it to this collection and I'm going to close out what I don't need. So here is the blank request that uh, I just created. And uh, obviously the, the request type has to be changed to post. And uh, what I will be doing next is taking the entire URL. It's a pretty lengthy URL, so we got to be careful here. And I'm going to be adding that here and that's my skill. So the next thing that I have got to add are the headers. And the first header that I'm going to be adding will be my UiPath license header. Uh, and that license is your API key. So I'm going to add the license and then my API key. Next, I have to add the content type. Obviously, the default content type in um, Postman would be, I think, application slash text. So I will be adding the content type. 
and application dot json or slash json uh, the reason for that is the body of the request that we are going to be submitting uh, will be uh, application slash json and then uh, once i've added the headers uh, the next thing that i'm going to be doing is go to the body section and switch to raw and set the format to json if you haven't set it already i would recommend setting that and then uh, the format is pretty simple this particular ai skill accepts one input and that is the raw text so i'm going to be putting in the raw text and that's going to be data oops and you can type your example text here what i'm going to be doing is i'm going to be taking the text that i derived from my favorite topic uh, wikipedia topic and uh, it's got to do with the brief history of the united states so i'm going to put it in here and with that what i have done is i have created a complete request that i can now submit to the ai skill and get my response back uh, so what i'll be doing next is i'm going to save this particular request before i send it and now i'm going to hit send this is a large piece of text so it typically takes about 10 to 12 seconds for the skill to respond and there we have it about 11 seconds and i do have success and if i go down now and take a look at the response body obviously the response body is pretty large because the larger this text body is the larger the response is going to be so here i'm going to open it up in full screen and when i open that here you can see that the skill has returned the expected result uh, so basically the expected result is the confidence and the position of the entity and also uh, the the entity recognized and the type of uh, entity and that's pretty much it for this video this is how you make your ai skill that is available in the uipath ai center accessible over the public internet to your trusted clients i hope you like this video and if you like this video please give it a like and subscribe to my channel and i'll talk to you soon thank you